The Earth-Sun-Moon relationship amplifies this problem for the evolutionary community. What sort of star would provide the perfect conditions of a habitable planet in the universe? Frank Sherwin writes, our sun provides the perfect conditions. It's not too small, that is, too dim or too cool. Not too big, producing unfortunate charbroil <laughs> results from simply being too hot. Compared to the intense and violent activity seen on other stars, our sun uniquely is remarkably even-tempered and well-mannered. It doesn't flare or pulse like other stars. Solar flares are not so violent as to vaporize our oceans or worse. It looks like we're living in a created haven, doesn't it? On the local level, our moon is equally amazing, leading secular authors to ask, quote from peer-reviewed secular journal, Who built the moon? I'm glad they put who rather than what. Who, who built the moon? The moon is 400 times smaller. We keep repeating that so you'll understand how solar eclipse will work. The moon is 400 times smaller than the star at the center of our solar system, yet it's also just one four hundredth of the distance between the Earth and the sun, end quote. Consequently, the moon and sun appear exactly the same size in Earth's sky, making precise solar eclipses possible. The authors also say, by some absolutely incomprehensible quirk of nature. What is that? <laughs> the moon also manages to precisely imitate the perceived annual movements of the sun each month. The moon does on a monthly scale what the sun does on a yearly scale. Something's going on. The moon's orbit is fiendishly, their words, difficult to explain. Moving as it does around a rotating Earth, which together form essentially a double planet system that orbits around the sun, it's a classic example of a three-dimensional gravitational three-body problem that has not been solved by the secular community.